All right, so we are live. Hello, Star Wars CCG players, fans, and folks with nothing better to do on a Friday night than hang out and watch uh, myself and Micah here after watching Dan uh, commentate the uh, previous top four game that was Jason... Rindo Apollyon versus David Woods. Um, I'm not sure if it quite ended yet. I know I was watching a little bit and then had to switch over here to get us all running. Um, again, Garrett Larson, dead body on the forums and Slack and everywhere else. Um, with me tonight is Micah, who is new to working with our stream and new to putting up with me so while <laughs> i'm uh trying to figure out what i did wrong here getting chat set up why don't you uh introduce yourself a little bit micah let people know who you are what your background is and go for it i am uh, known as local lobo on gimp and uh i played back when it first started um, in 96 and stopped around when they uh, came out with the virtual sets. And then during the pandemic, I uh, found out about GIMP and started playing and uh, started picking up on the virtuals. And I mainly do sealed tournaments, but uh, I just recently did uh, Bad Mouse's eighth Gimp C tournament and uh, lost in the first round against Bastone, but uh, had a lot of fun doing it. So enjoyed it. And there's no shame in losing to Mike Bastone. He is a very good player, somebody who's been around for a long time, and lots of us have lost to him many, many times. So don't feel the least bit bad about that i'm you know super happy to hear you're back in the game so what we're going to be commentating today is going to be game one of the top eight game or top four excuse me for the jawa cup between connor Britton, who was the number one seed and scott lingrell who actually made it in as the eight seed at five and one so the jawa cup i know mike and i talked about this a little bit as we're getting everything set up what the jawa cup is if you haven't been following along yet it's a modified format the jawa council which includes bill kafer kendall hallman and some other folks who i don't know their names off the top of my head so i'm not going to embarrass and just there's definitely other folks involved um basically look at the games that are going on at the top of the meta the decks that are most played at worlds getting played a lot in the ocs the online championship series games and say well let's play a meta without those decks you know so like this year's jawa cup uh, hunt down and communing and bring it before me and the saga decks were all banned so you're seeing other decks come up and play like this one i believe this first round what i was told is connor's going to play his light side which was no idea versus scott and his court of the vile gangster musicians which is always a fun deck to watch like just watching the musicians and trying to remember what all they do and how all they interact with each other is kind of amusing and there'll be a lot of clicking and zooming in and what does this guy do <laughs> so hopefully micah can keep us on track because otherwise i'm going to end up in a confused state of too many musicians and you know i, I may bust into the day the music died and no one wants to hear me singing uh singing any Don McLean songs. I don't think at this point anyone wants to hear anyone sing Don McLean songs, but that might be a separate conversation. So, Indeed. 
So what was what's your thought on the Jawa Cup? As someone who, you know, came into this kind of new and you know, now you've kind of got a little background and hey, so how it works. What's your thought process on a tournament like this and on a format like this? Well, um, like you said, being able to play games that aren't the uh, aren't considered meta, but are still a lot of fun. Um, I, I think it's going to be really interesting to watch how they develop these uh, decks, and uh, um, I'm just kind of interested in how it all plays out. So, I think this will be an interesting. Uh match as i said it's no idea versus scott's court musicians that you know you don't normally hear a deck identified by just one player one person like oh it's scott's deck but like scott langrell has built decks like this before like he he is besides being one of the advocates and you know, really the reason the game is still around this long after being out of print, Scott puts in so much work and love into this game that it's absolutely insane, and there's no way to thank him enough for everything he does, but, like, Scott has a few decks that just are, they're Scott decks, and Scott is identified with them, so, and Court Musicians is one of those decks, like, no one else put this combo together like there were other musician decks out there and but scott's been playing this a while and played it very very well and really kind of put the last finishing touches together it'll be interesting to watch it against no idea um because scott's deck really focuses on getting a beat down in it doesn't want to get into a drain race it doesn't want to ignore you and it's really hard to beat down no idea uh, okay apparently Connor's running about 15 minutes late which all right cool so we can uh, certainly fill time here while we're while we're waiting we'll give you guys some free Star Wars we'll pull up the uh, Batmouse's gem PC game that is Killer Kiwi versus um, Greg Shaw, Hall of Famer Greg Shaw. Um, and it looks like you got uh, commentator status added, so you should be able to look at this game as well. And this Killer Kiwi is playing a... looks like a variation of the... Uh, Bat 40 deck, the Yevon 4 Ops deck that runs uh, Jedi Business and apparently, okay, I'm like, Gimp just froze on me. Runs Jedi Business and uses Jedi to hold a Battleground site and work through that stuff. And Greg is. Greg's running low. I mean, Greg's got. Seven cards down and seven in hand for a total life force of 14. And Killer Kiwi's got 18 down and three in hand, so he's got 21. And it looks. And like you mentioned that you, you mentioned that you were both on the same team. What does that instill? So at the competitive levels the the travel to worlds travel to like the indianapolis the eclipse event that is happening in april that i'm driving out to along with aj and a bunch of other folks are coming to um the team is basically we play test together like there's some teams around star wars that you'll kind of hear mentioned occasionally the new allies which is a whole bunch of folks including greg shaw um, the Killer Bees, which is the team Killer Kiwi and I are on, along with Batmouse, Anthony Howard, the Sheriff of Gamp, Dan Tartaglione, Justin Miyashiro, um, 
Team 5, which is Joe Olson, Hayes Hunter, those folks. It's basically just groups that kind of play test together and, you know, just sort of have fun interacting with each other and sort of working and using that time and play test together to improve. Like, it's a way to work with each other and kind of, you know, flesh out deck ideas and take the, you know, hey, here's a really dumb start of an idea. And, you know, you have someone else on the team who's like, well, wait a minute, what if you change, you know, these two things and do this? And you can all of a sudden end up with a deck that sounds really dumb, but actually works okay and is, you know, a lot of fun to use. And that's what, that's really the genesis of teams. Like, that's why you team up with play with other players is just to, you want to work with them and everybody wants to work together to get better together. And it's fairly common in a lot of CCGs because Star Wars is so kind of small and a little bit insular. You know, we, we have a lot of people who have known each other for years and years and years. A lot of that gets a little bit exacerbated and a little bit more, you know, you know about it a little more because there's only, you know, there's a couple hundred active players. You know, Worlds is going to draw 50 to 60 players, you know, every year, and a lot of those are going to be the same or very close to the same 50 or 60 players, and we're all coming to hang out with each other much more than... You know, we're all there to compete, but we're there to hang out and have fun. And, like, teammates are really friends. Like, I, I'm everyone on my team are people I consider friends. You know, these aren't people I'm just like, oh, I just teamed up with you to get better and because that's all I want to do. No, these are, these are my friends. It just happens to be that we also want to work together to get better at the game. So there's a real camaraderie with Absolutely. everybody. And, and there's the camaraderie goes both ways because there's absolutely a real camaraderie within each and every team. You know, all of the teams really enjoy, I think, all enjoy each other's presence. But there's a huge amount of camaraderie just within Star Wars in general. Like, when you start going to these events, you'll realize that, you know, these are people, we've all been friends for, you know, in some cases, 20 plus years. I mean, I started playing, my first Star Wars CCG tournament was in 1997. And so I've been playing cards for, you know, 26, 27 years. And there's people who I've known for a long time, but at the same time, all of us realize that we want new players in. So like coming into your first major you're going to walk into a room where there's a bunch of people you don't know, but by the end of it, you're just going to have a bunch of friends because everyone's there to have fun. Everyone's there to be friendly and play games. Like, and we get that that's what we're there for. We're there to play games. Like you go to, you know, you, you go to a major, you're going to be, you know, walking into kind of a reunion, but a reunion where everyone really wants to include you and you will get included and invited you know hey hang out and play extra games you want to learn more you want to go get a beer like all of that stuff just happens pretty organically and we've got you know new players who have kind of talked about it as well carl crazy carl started playing just a couple of years ago i think his first tournament or one of his first tournaments he drove out to nebraska from ohio and he and i played and had a lot of fun, you know, and Tommy, Tommy, whose last name I'm not going to embarrass us both by butchering, who's Lodge Pog, just showed up and started playing. Like, and everybody's welcome. And if you're not sure you have the cards, you're not sure you have the stuff you need to play, you do. And I'm just watching to see if I see. Yep, I don't see a new start yet. Um, as this game's getting a little, 
a little close here, but like if you if you're gonna come to a tournament and you're not sure you have the cards, reach out to myself or anyone else who's gonna be there, and we'll get you decks. Like, don't let that be the reason you don't come and have fun. That's cool. So, and yeah, we're kind of, I mean, I'll be honest, we're, we're filling a little bit of time right now because I got started and I didn't realize Connor was going to be running a little bit late. So everybody gets to listen to me. And I, you know, I told Micah, which had a little bit about this. And I said, you know, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to, you know, feel, feel free to get me going because it's a lot easier to get me going than to shut me up. <laughs> so, and everybody who's in here who knows me, would agree with that entirely and that's what we're trying to trying to get going here so uh, i'm just watching uh chat real quick on uh gimp and seeing what's going on so uh, all right so we're still waiting i see Scott's on. I do not see that uh, Stubbly's on. So we'll go back and catch the end of the uh, Y40 game here with Shadow Collective versus Yevon 4 Ops. I apologize. If I use acronyms you're not uh, familiar with, please slow me down. I'm like, hey, Garrett, right. what is that? Uh, because we're really trying to be you know, get, give everyone knowledge of what's going on. Like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to gatekeep the game here and like, oh, well, I don't want to tell you what's going on. Like, no, I really do want, I want you to understand what's going on. I want to be able to tell you this is what we're looking at. So, um, I'm just watching this game. So we got Shaw on no idea, or on uh, Shadow Collective. He's down to seven cards down in three of the hands. So he's down to 10 force total versus 16 down and three in hand but he's stacking everybody in front of ray with lightsaber and he does have the aura there who can make ray forfeit zero which is potentially not great there's not a good spot for i mean i guess he can just run away to the 2-0 so looking at this set here Greg's going to get drained for two at Yavin. And I feel like we're going to see some sort of battles. Like, I think he's going to have to battle Asajj, and Greg's got to know his destiny's there and is hoping he can clear them both. Like, he's going to try and hit Yoda and then kill Kit with attrition. But there's not a lot of... doesn't have a lot left there. So, well, apologize. I'm just kind of flipping back and forth real quick and making sure we're not. Uh, I don't want to miss anything on uh, Stubbly's. Stubbly showing up. So, all right. Let me see. Kill Kiwi. Retrieve walk lane. And it looks like Killer Kiwi also retrieved all wings report in. Yep, so he he placed Walkling out of play Walkling. to retrieve the All Wings combo, which is really just a retrieve a five. I, I think he may have... I'm a little surprised he didn't do that at the end of when Greg was in draw phase, because then he would have been able to track that five and could have just activated to that five and been ready to rock with it. Because drawing fives is good usually, but he should be should be all right here. I, I think he's still in a pretty good position. He just needs to not basically not lose. Like it sounds mean to say it that way, but like so he just activated down. I'm not sure what he activated to. I've been kind of flipping back, so I'm not tracking his deck at all. Um, you see the drain of two. Gets a defensive fire from hand and then double back. 
from reserve deck, and we'll see the Luke Retrieval. And he is flipped with Y40, so he's going to be... He can do that Retrieval as well. Greg's down to only eight cards. Like... Alright, so... Looks like Killer shoots, goes for a Jedi Business Search to try and get a lightsaber. And missed, which is fine. He's, I mean, a lightsaber isn't going to matter for him in any of these battles. And he's only got two cards in reserve, which tells me he's not battling with Rey. So I expect we will just probably see a battle into Asajj. Rey move over to the Dryden Study. And Green Leader move back to Camino, just to keep drain pressure on. Like, you're ahead in the game, you're ahead in force. Just keep pinging. He's got all the guns off table. Greg no longer has any guns on table to ping with You'll Be Dead, which is pretty impressive, actually. So, yep, we do see the battle with the Saj. I'm just going back quick and making sure uh, I don't see Stubbly in... Yet, I don't see the Java Cup Top 8 game going on yet. Looks like Apollyon and the, the other game that's going on right now. Apollyon versus uh, No Reply, David Woods. Apollyon's up by about 11 in Force Down. Doesn't show where he's at in... Doesn't show Force in Hand, and I'm not going to jump into that one because Dan is awesomely streaming it right now. Uh, so we do see Shaw swinging at Yoda, which is exactly what I expected. And he does hit, so now he just needs to draw a 5 to break Kit Fisto's immunity, which would actually be kind of bad for for Killer here. Like, it, it's good to get rid of Asajj, but he kind of needs that Battleground site. And dark time to subtract one. I don't want to... It's just to get a four back. And he didn't get the five. Oh, he did not get the five. That was real big. Because that allows... Killer would have had to... I think if he'd have wiped that side, I think you almost have to move Ray in front of Prince Shizor. Given that Shaw's only got one card in hand, and you just count with... You're going to hit Shizor, and then you're going to lose Ray for the overflow, but you're going to be paying for drains. And that's not good. Being able to keep Kit there with Shaw only having one card in hand, I think you move Ray to the Dryden's Hut, the 2-0. And go from there. Um, like I said, I'm just flipping back and forth between uh, watching the game. And if you want to kind of talk about what's going on for a minute while I yes. well, while I'm watching uh, this side just so people can kind of get a uh, verbal go for it. Alright, so Killer Kiwi uh, uses uh it looks like the time to fight is now to uh, get a force back and retrieves Yoda, Master of the Force, and uses the one force for secret plans. And we'll just draw up. Draws two cards. So that's left with 16 life force. And Shaw is left with seven life force. And only one card in hand. Hmm. So I'm a little surprised to see Green Leader left at Gaul. Um, although he did save a bunch of forests, I'm wondering if it's going to be a react with uh, Tycho. Uh, Green Tycho in uh, Green Squadron 1, I think it is, or Green Squadron 3, something like that. Tycho and ship. <laughs> that's, 
who deploys as a react. Mm. Um, still do not see any stubbly. Oh, never mind. We have a uh, stubbly and advocate are here. So we yeah. will start in with that game. I missed that they had gotten here. So, yep, we've got advocate Scotland Grell playing court of the vile gangster. This is going to be his court musicians versus Connor Britton playing no idea. Looks like Scott is, so well, I'll let you kind of take the lead here, Mike. I'm, All right, um, so Subly deploys the Walkling, uh, make 10 men for like 100 and Insurrection. And Advocate has started with Power of the Hut, Virtual, uh, Crush the Rebellion, and Jabba's Haven. Okay. Virtual. So, th this is the musician's deck so i expect to see scott's gonna set up and he's gonna have to try and build for that beat down but it's gonna be hard and he's got to leave himself enough power in the audience chamber to be careful because he's also got to be real careful about a uh, stunning leader because he's not gonna be able to stunning leader out of the battle necessarily it'll just leave his some of his guys versus some of connor's guys which is not the way he wants that to go, I don't think. And it looks like Subly started with a tragedy has occurred and aim high, which are the two I usually start with on the light side. I'm still trying to get used to the shields as well. Yep, yeah, and that's th those are very common shield pulls for light side, especially when you see Court of the Vile Gangster. Court of the Vile Gangster is and especially with the power of the hut and java's haven start basically screams hey i'm playing scum and villainy scum and villainy says your aliens deploy minus one and whenever you initiate a battle you retrieve two force so aim high is a real good you know you're you're always going to want to get that in play against scum and villainy so playing that is a pretty standard pretty standard drop yeah, i can tell already that this is not the court of the vile gangster that i used to play with bounty hunters no this is you're gonna see uh you're gonna see the musicians start coming out here real quick and the band getting together and it's it's a really unique deck as and scott's Use Java's Haven to grab Nalhutta. Use the court objective to grab a docking bay. Looks like he threw out another one there. Docking bay, the Death Star 2 docking bay from hand. That's just some activation. You know, the deck actually doesn't need a ton of activation. But when Scott gets it set up, basically everything deploys to Tatooine for like one or zero force. It's kind of insane. So, it looks like he's grabbing an alien with the audience chamber text. I expect that'll be Jabba. Uh, the only other character it could maybe be would be Greta. And that'd be a real aggressive line to take. Like, Scott knows what was in there because he searched already with Court, so... We'll see who he goes and... Who he goes and gets and oh all right so he's going with akrev akrev is a one story nature control phases may use one force to take a musician into hand from reserve deck so he can start fueling that engine and then we see scum and villainy come out i mean scott's got to back up akrev with somebody there we go rapper toonie and now we get the Garrett needs to zoom in on cards. Where present adds X to force point must use to initiate battle, where X equals the number of musicians present. Ah. Okay, so between Akrev and Rappertuni, Connor, who's going to have 10 force, is going to have to pay 3 to start a battle there. Uh, 4 now as 
Cy Snoodles comes to hang out as well. And her four strain canceling text won't come into play when you have uh, at least three musicians on table and they immediately Omnibox cancel opponent's four strain at a related site. I don't expect Connor to come to Tatooine. I mean, in theory, Scott only has three ability there. But I don't think that's really going to be an issue. Like, it, it would be a very aggressive play for Connor to make. Because he's not going to be able to cancel Scum. And he probably doesn't kill all the characters. Yeah, I, I think it is. And I'm wondering if Scott set that up in chat. We see uh, Blake... Silk would say going to Tatooine feels like a trap, and it definitely does. Um, you're, you're, you've got ten force. It's going to cost you four. I mean, best case scenario, it's four to deploy two guys. Four to battle. You draw a battle destiny. You probably, you very potentially end up with one guy power zero from Rappertuni. And you gotta draw a six to clear the site, otherwise Scott takes advantage of scum and villainy and whatever he loses, he just goes and gets back. I I think Connor maybe just throws somebody at Scarif throws uh throws down a ship at Scarif. Because he's using insurrection right now and just seeing what all's in his reserve deck. But I think he throws a ship at Scarif. And with the force held back, um, with the force held back, do you think he might have like imperial barrier or something? He certainly could. He could have barrier. He could have um, probably not. I mean, he could have stunning leader, but like that's wildly ineffective against the no idea deck because most of those guys are going to be ability two. Um, he could have. He could be sitting on Greedo who's in chat because Virtual Greedo comes down for one force with Scum and Villainy on table. He, he can deploy as a react and, you know, he costs one less because of Scum. Uh, looks like Connor does say, yeah, not going to Tatooine. Just drops the beach and looks like he's probably just going to pick some up. I think that was probably a smart turn for Stubbly. I mean, with Akrev out on turn one, Scott can go get Grieta, who makes all your musicians everywhere deploy minus one and power plus, I think, three when she's at the audience chamber. So it would have been... Like, Connor's got to go down with enough power and forfeit that he doesn't just have to peel a bunch of cards. So, we'll see what Scott does here. I expect we'll see a drain of one, even if he has to pay for it, because he's got 12 force, and the deck just doesn't use that much force. So, we'll see. Akrev take a musician. Um, it's Grieta, unless he's got her in hand. Like, there's no one else... There's no other musician that's that important to the deck. Yep, it is Grieta. And Grieta, yep, other Rodians deploy minus one to the same site. Once during each of your control phases, may use one force to take any Rodian into hand from reserve deck. While at audience chamber, all your other musicians are deploy minus one and forfeit plus three. Excuse me, it's forfeit plus three, not... Um, so Scott did choose not to drain. Just dropped Greta and drawing some. All right. That's a little bit of a surprise. I would have drained just to... I hate paying three to drain for one, but, like, Scott just drew up to 14. He's still got five cards in his force pile. Getting an extra force drain in in a match play scenario is sometimes worth it. 
Like, but he may just be saying, I want all my force, and, you know, if Connor doesn't deploy and grab Stardust here, Scott might just try and swarm either the beach or the data vault and just hope he can slow everything down. Oh, wow. So Connor went for a pull with Insurrection. He went to find a Dakime. And Scott had the Force Push combo, Force Push and Plod Racer Collision in hand and used it to just put Double Agent out of play. That's big. Double Agent was probably a really going to be a really good way for him to um, get rid of Erica, who's otherwise probably just going to sit and retrieve it one a turn for Scott. Mm. Um, so Blake says in chat, because for some reason the chat's not feeding through, that standard scum packages tend to have a pretty aggressive space package. Scott's does not have nearly as much space as most scum decks. Um, a lot of his space, a lot of deck space is devoted to all these puny little musicians who are insane when you drop six of them together, but you got to drop six of them together. <laughs> so we see Connor drop Commander Van Den Willard and grab Stardust. Uh, Van Den Willard's nice, but he is the drop card from hand on the use to draw one off the top of reserve so he'll start cycling connor's deck which connor definitely wants to filter the characters into his hand filter the better destinies into his deck because both of these decks just have a lot of characters see the 10 of four go up to scarif that flips connor's objective but he's going to have to start backing some guys up. There's Lieutenant Blount. And Lieutenant Blount is kind of an odd add, potentially, because he is best against ISB, ISB Operations, Imperial Security Bureau. He flips it back if he's at a Coruscant location. And ISB is one of the banned decks in the Jawa format. So, like, you don't need Blount in a lot of things, but he is a spy, which works well with this deck, and Connor says we're going hard. Uh, looks like in chat, Dan just said that Jason Rindow advanced to the finals, so he did beat David Woods by enough to advance, and congratulations to him. Uh, that means one side of the finals is going to be clones and Thrawn. Um, and yeah, Blount's a spy, Blount is perfectly fine in this deck. Like, I have zero problem. I, I think in other decks he's not super necessary in the Jawa format because ISB isn't available. But for no idea, he's a very solid card. And Scott uses Akrav again. And he goes and gets Umpaste. Umpaste is... Oh, and he grabs Evader Monarch and uses it Lost. It's Hunchu and the Falcon, Cassian, R2 Brave Little Droid, Hujik, Sabotage, Commander Van and Willard, Sagara, Ezra Bridger, Corporal Plow. So he doesn't get any duplicates. And he sees that Connor's got the Hujiks in hand already. Um, just so we umpash stay each of your other musicians at the same site he is power plus two and immune to attrition less than three he's the the rest of that linchpin so yeah Scott uh, there's the Erica that I was talking about she's a spy she's a musician she also retrieves a force umpash stay umpash stay is a spy Oh, he works as a spy for Jabba. Wow. Learn something new. So he takes Umpash Stay to the 2-2 uh, site. Uh, we see Twilight Advisor used to probably get Jabba. Oh, Proxima. Okay. I, say, I don't think he, Scott, runs the uh, bridge. Um... 
The Umpash State play surprises me a little bit. I mean, that screams to me that Scott's trying to just spread and cause as much damage as he can. Uh, and I guess, like, if you can get your opponent to be to lock themselves into the war room because they can't neighbor and out of it, you're probably okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if Scott was running the passenger deck or not, or was just using that and just wanted to use the Twi'lek to grab Proxima or um, Java. I mean, Proxima's great in terms of, again, filtering the deck. Just, here's my... Let's get aliens into hand. So, we'll see a couple drains here and then a ping from Stardust, and Scott will have to be... So this is going to be one of the instances where you don't want to float the objective? Um, court? court does not uh, does not flip. Hmm. A court has a flip side, but it basically never intends to flip um there we go yeah court uh, you see in chat opaque sleep for court um, let's turn the audio down just a little bit here and see if that helps um, so yeah court the flip side of court is not particularly strong. Like, it, it does cool things, but it's sort of fun Fred things. If you are the, you know, if you ever read the, the old magic definition of players, you have fun Fred and winning Walt. And the flip side of court is fun Fred. You know, feed dudes to creatures is awesome and but it doesn't get you a ton out of it you know and the zero side is frankly just better like give you a ping every time if they don't come to Tatooine Connor's not necessarily respecting Scott's space entirely. Like, that's, uh, you know, as we see, Scott lost some space there. Lost the Dobreen Sacrifice. Lost Zuckus and Mist Hunter from Reserve Deck. That might be a limit. You know, he probably only has a few ships in there, but theoretically, going after the Tanev and Blount might not be a bad thing if he had a couple cards. And that Zuckus wouldn't shock me if Scott uses Jabba's Haven to go get that right away. And yeah, so chat there, you know, it, it's hard to capture guys. And to build your deck all around capturing guys, if you face a deck that just won't give you guys to capture... It, you've got a ton of wasted card slots. So instead, you just use it as an activation platform. It pulls your guys. Like, it does so many good things. You don't need to flip. So. Conversely, the no idea objective absolutely wants to flip. And we see Connor says, nope, I'm going to Tatooine. Let's make something happen. I... Um, <laughs> I don't like any of this. I, I think I think Connor would have been in a better position to take over Scarif and just drain race Scott. Um, going and getting yeah, I, I see in chat. You know, Admiral Akbar was just summoned. This is. Uh, All those guys there is cute, but it's uh, not 
So Jin is going to add a Battle Destiny there because Stardust is on your spy. Um, I expect we'll see a React with Greedo here. And Greedo will forfeit for six because of Court of the Vile Gangster adding two to the Bounty Hunter forfeit. Maybe we'll see a React with... Am I... Or not? Or not. All right. So straight to Battle Destiny. There's a two. I mean, Sai Snoodles forfeits for six by herself. So there's a two and a two. Um, not really all that uh, all that important. Yeah, Erica forfeits for ten, but it's more you want to keep Erica there retrieving. So Sai Snoodles forfeiting for five is actually way more important. Or six. Um, so the five in Battle Destiny puts him at a total power of 11. Oh, the extra one from... forgot about the extra one he was getting from Saw and Ray is enough. He's going to have to forfeit Erica. As Sai forfeits for... Like, otherwise, I would... For, Psy forfeits for six. Because if you could get away with forfeiting Psy and just peeling a card or two, you'd be totally fine with that. But that doesn't happen. However, this just screams Scott's going to do something. Um, I assume we'll see Erica forfeited here. Oh, he lost Grieta from hand first. A little confused there. He must have forgotten about yeah, the Scott one mis from Ray. Uh, I think Scott misread the numbers. Because you had the 8 and 7 up there, and I think Scott was thinking... Yeah, Scott was thinking he only had the 6 attrition. And... So he peeled a couple... <laughs> And Scott asks for a revert, and Connor says, okay. Um, that's a pretty, I mean, allowing reverts like that is somewhat standard when no game state has changed. Nothing has changed a little bit. Um, there. Try and turn your volume down a little bit more, Mike. It sounds like you're real loud for them. Let's see if that helps. Um, you know, but no, no game state change happened. Like, with, no one saw any new information. It was just a lack of the numbers where in person, you know, hey, your attrition is seven. Oh, okay. So, but we'll see the same thing happen. Corporal Pow dies. Erica dies. And Corporal Pow was really just there to die. Like... And Erica dies and covers. So, but now with Scum, Scott's going to get Erica back when he starts a battle. So, that's what he wants to do with this deck. Like, I, I'm... Connor deploying there just felt like walking into a trap. I, I, don't, uh, I don't like it. We see Proxima revealing the top three. Uh, we'll see which one Scott takes into hand, if any. Uh, okay, so he grabbed Nizuk Beck. Nizuk Beck says, Power plus three when present with your position. One present at the start of battle may cause one character of ability less than X to move away for free, or that character is immediately lost. Where... X equals the number of you musicians present. Um, and then he uses Akrev to go get Lin Mi, and this is going to end badly for Connor. I mean, so James says in chat he thinks Connor wanted to try and clear so he could play simple tricks, but like, what does that get you? Because Scott's going to go after him at a battleground. Like, 
it, it stops Scott from doing what? Jabba's... Yeah, the war room drain. I, I'm not positive Scott's going to drain anyways. I mean, so he just paid the, for the drain, but that wasn't necessarily a guaranteed drain. Like, Scott's perfectly happy just dropping everybody and... You know, I assume it'll be a move away gin to drop it down to one battle destiny. Um, Stubbly plays Golden Route. I don't think he has anybody that... Oh, yeah, Lin Mi allows Boba Fett to deploy for free, so... Probably doesn't want that. There's Dudo. What the heck just happened there? Dodo, what do we... That guy. <laughs> um, who really does nothing other than being Power 2 and Forfeit 5. Until we see... And actually, it won't even change. Nizuk back see or sing come down uh, there's boba fett bounty hunter for two force so now he's drawing three battle destiny there uh, <laughs> yeah. and uh ryan searson says i don't know what these guys do and at this point i don't want to know there's Lyrian karen who says for each musician charge present Adds a cover charge of one of the force required to move or deploy each character the same side. So he does not use Nizik Beck. Um, it's a little bit of a surprise. Yeah, he's got a ton of forfeit, but I'm a little surprised he didn't use uh, Beck to force somebody away. But we'll see a shot, and maybe because he just wants to wipe the site. Um, I expect. Aura will probably shoot at Ray. Yep, because Connor could use the tax up. Sabotage to cancel the targeting. So he's going to keep all his forfeit. Um, Boba Fett forfeits for eight. Um. <laughs> and then... He's going to use Grappling Hook to shuffle Scott's reserve deck. Oh, his own reserve deck, excuse me. He wasn't happy with his deck. Oh! There's a little more space. Scott pulls a 6 for Battle Destiny, a 3, that puts him up to 9. So now we're killing two characters. And a 2 for 11. So theoretically... Connor could keep one person there. That does feel a little bit like a trap. I mean, the saw is going to add a ton to the attrition. Uh, attrition for each of their characters. So saw alone is adding 60 to the attrition. Like, you're going to lose everyone. Yeah, Connor wants to lose everyone. I'm just not necessarily positive he's going to be able to. Let's see. So he'll be at 16... So Connor's going to be down 10. I don't think Connor can lose everyone. Because there's no combination that doesn't add up to more than 11. Connor's going to be stuck with a character still on table. Um, I think we're going to see Boba Fett and probably... Okay, Scott... Why is Scott losing a card from hand? I'm a little confused. Yeah, Blake Scott. Uh, yeah, Blake. He does have a Hugix in hand, so he'll have to deal with that at some point, and that's fine. But it's still not ideal. Unless he wants to try... Yeah, no, the... He does, however, cost Scott three guys, which is good. Um, one of them being Lynn Karen, so... Connor can theoretically go after him, but Connor's only got five cards in hand. Like, I expect what we'll see here is Drain, Drain, Ping, and then... I don't know. I think you have to just 
eat the eat the battle. You, just, you may just leave Saw there for a turn and play the Hujiks and call it a day. And you did have the Hujiks in hand, right? Yeah, that was revealed by the Monarch super early, so like this turn, you're fine. Saw just sits there and you're fine. Like your, your worst case scenario is Saw sits there and you Hujiks out of the battle and you're okay with that. Like the only way you're really going to be sad is if Scott has some way to stop that Hujix from happening, and I mean, draw their. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you're right. Because it, you'll. Ryan said, battle into him, just so you can't, you don't give up the scum retrieval, and yeah, that's. Battle comes after deploy, so he saves you the ping either way. Blake, I'm not even sure you put another character down. Like, yeah, you're, you'd almost rather suicide someone into Umpash stay. Right now, the problem is you can't suicide anyone into Umpash stay. Umpash stay. I mean, you can deploy there, but then they're just stuck there. So there's Ezra Bridger going down with Saw. That's good for Connor, and the adds a bunch more attrition. Like, now he'll get a Battle Destiny there at Attrition, and Connor says, nope, we're gonna... All right. Connor is, uh... Connor is taking this aggressively. Yeah, I mean, this is aggressive. I think... Here's where Scott really needs that Greedo. Scott does not have Greedo. All right. Well, what uh, what do we have here? Uh, Stubbly uses Cheer It to peek at the top reserve deck, and then Scott shuffles Connor's reserve deck after he uh, peeks. Yeah, I mean, with Saw adding three to the attrition, like you've got a chance here to peel through, so. Stubbly's going to cancel the shot with Aura. He puts a uh, Commander Melshi out of play using the objective. And then it's just straight to Battle Destiny, which is a three, so it'll be a total attrition of six, which is just Psy Snoodles. Like, that's actually very good for Scott. And there's a five, which is going to get canceled with Cassian. So it does mean Scott's down by nine. But Psy covers six of that by herself. Yeah, I mean, if you can keep Scott from ever going to Scarif, but I'm not sure Scott was ever intending to go to Scarif. Like, that's a pretty solid stack right there, and I'm not sure Scott had the cards to go mess with it. You know, I think Scott's just trying to get his drains in and, you know, get that War Room drain going while he can and grind, grind Connor out of guys as well. We see Connor retrieves Ray by putting Walkling out of play and... Scott has the imbalance combo to make him lose a force right back, and then Scott conceded. Concedes. Wow. Okay. Well, so Scott Scott just conceded the match. Um, congratulations. So now it'll be Stubbly. Yeah, Scott said he had a bad hand and just wasn't going to recover. And, I mean, obviously, yeah, like not having Greedo, that's okay. So, Scott concedes the match in the top four. So, the finals will be Stubbly with, uh, Stubbly, Connor Britton with no idea. And I don't remember what his dark side was. I apologize. Uh, versus Jason Rindell, Apollyon, who is playing... 
clones and Thrawn. Um, well, that was uh, quick. What did... Uh, okay, so it'll be two Thrawns. They're both playing Thrawn, according to chat. So, did anything, besides the concede that, you know, kind of caught us all out of nowhere a little bit, <laughs> um, what did you think about the match? What, what did... Did anything uh, stand out? Um, just that uh, Stubbley went to, decided to go to um, Tatooine it was kind of surprising. I I, th um, I think Saw helped him a lot there. Definitely. Like, Saw put in a ton of work that adding to the attrition cost, cost Scott more guys than he wanted to lose. And that was, I think, big. So, I think Connor played it very, very well. Like, he was the number one seed in this event after the, you know, a after the six-game thing. So, he, he earned it. So, we have the finals. I'm sure we'll hear when those get scheduled. And we'll see who uh, ends up on the call. But thank you for joining me, Micah. Um, I enjoyed it. We'll, we'll definitely get some more of these going. I think I'll probably grab you, you know, we'll try and get some retro games going. I think we've got the top, the, the top pairings are starting to break down in the retro league a little bit. And we'll get you into some of those. Cause I know you kind of, you know, you're still getting used to all of the new V cards. So streaming some of the retro stuff is, can be a lot of fun too. So. We will get you into that. Thank you, everybody, for uh, watching. Congratulations to Connor on advancing to the finals. Congratulations to Jason. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for letting me help out.